Welcome to Pageant Planet's podcast, where we share stories and strategies to help expand and connect the global pageant community. Visit pageantplanet.com to find pageants, hire coaches, shop for dresses, and more. Now, here's your host, Stephen Roddy. Welcome everyone to another Pageant Planet podcast. This is the podcast for contestants who want to be inspired and discover how to win the crown. Today, Jesse Ledoux, our queen of coaching, and myself, we are covering the life of Mia Jones. Mia is a triple threat state title holder after winning the titles of Miss Delaware Teen USA 2014, Miss Delaware USA 2017, and Miss Delaware Earth USA 2019. Uh, She's a graduate from Delaware State University, and Mia graduated with a major in art education and now works as a middle school teacher. She experienced racism and bullying at a young age, which is when she turned to art for comfort. She has been able to turn this therapeutic coping technique into a platform and a career to help children express their inner creativity. More recently, Mia has been known for her Earth activism and planet-focused initiatives. And through representing Delaware at Miss Earth USA 2019, she won the title of Miss Earth USA Water as feels just as serious as the role if it were Miss USA, Miss Earth USA. And she enjoys styling and coaching pageant beauty queens in the Delaware area at Cecil Boutique. She thrives on not giving the dress to win, but giving the dress to the winner. And let's learn more about Mia. So growing up, most kids don't admit to liking school, even if you're good at it. And this was the same for Mia, but in very different circumstances than you would expect. Yeah. So after her mother would drop her off at a bus station, Mia would wait until she left and then run and stay home for the day. And we still see how oppressed people of color are in today's society. And Mia was a victim of this oppression as a child. This bullying affected her badly to the point of suicidal ideation. And at 16 years old, she thought her life had to end because she didn't have friends Her peers would continuously put her down and tell her to leave them alone. And what other choice does a teenager have? And sometimes teenagers, they don't see other choices at the time. Um, And Mia was at that point. But there are so many other options. Yeah, kids are so cruel. Like you hear them out on the playground Mm. or in school. You see it. Like the words to say to each other, horrible. Like, Mm -hmm. I mean, I I remember even just looking back on things that – like my friends did and even some of the things like I did and then things that other people did to me. And I'm like, it was crazy. And so I could only imagine uh, some of the things that, well, I don't even think I could imagine, you know, because it's just a whole different level um, mm-hmm. of what uh, someone like a, a black woman goes through versus like me being in nowhere, Ohio and, you know, being white. So but I think, sorry, Steve. No, go ahead. I think that like, I am not one of those people that look back on high school and think, those are the best years of my life. In Mm-mm. fact, I love to forget those years. They were so formative for me as a person, but they were not enjoyable. And I know there are people that look back and they treasure those days and are so special to them. But I would argue that most people don't feel that way. So if you are a teen or a contestant that feels like they're kind of trapped in their current circumstance, it feels like forever when you're in it. But now being in my early 30s, looking back, it was like, okay, why did I why did I stress that so much? Why did I take everything they said so personally? When looking back, I just feel like I grew so much. And I'm so proud that I didn't allow that to the negativity of others and the bullying and the, and all of the um, exclusion that I went through. And I know other people listening and like Mia have experienced. So there's light at the end of the tunnel and there are options and you are not alone. And it stinks that people are like this, but it's the reality. Yeah. And I don't want to I'm going to say a dogmatic statement, but yeah, it's really challenging to be dogmatic in this particular situation. But I found that people who say like, oh, high school is the best years of your life are people that don't have big enough plans that carry them anywhere outside of high school. Like in high school, they were like the it person or Mm -hmm. they had all the ducks in a row. But like after that, their their life, I don't want to say fizzled out, right? Because it really diminishes it. But it doesn't seem like they're going towards any bigger goal or in the pursuit of anything. And sp- specifically for our audience, you who are listening, you're very goal-driven. You're very goal-oriented. I mean, you want things that are bigger than what high school can provide. To me, like high school, Jesse, I share the same sentiment where I'm like, 
see ya. At graduation, <laughs> I'm like, thank you, goodbye. And I love to learn. I just didn't like the structure because that didn't really work well for me and how I'm wired. So, oh, I have an anecdotal story uh-huh. real quick to finish off this topic. Um, my girlfriend and I were talking the other day and she was like, you know, I was talking to this kid. He wanted, she owns a business and she has a lot of employees that are, um, entry level careers uh, right out of college. And she has a 25 year old kid that was really struggling. And he was like, you know, I was the captain of the football team. How did I get here? Like, I thought life would be so bigger. (laughs) And I'm like, dude, if you are six years out of high school and that's still your high point, like, come on, man. Yeah. Uh, but you're so right. Our audience, they are goal driven and it is hard to be different when you're growing up in in a school environment and people don't want to believe that there's something bigger out there for someone else because a lot of jealousy. So keep on keeping on our listeners. And I mean, gosh, I was captain of my football team, but I don't think I've thought about that since you just said that story. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, well, I guess I was too. Gosh, that definitely didn't seem like a high point. I'm like, yeah, okay, like obvious, right? Who else are you going to pick? I mean, but um, so anyways, back to Mia. Thankfully for Mia, she had God watching over her who had much more important plans for her to fulfill. And even when it may seem like everything is going wrong, we have to remember there is a bigger plan in our life. You know, and I talk about this before. It's your story. Like the things that happen to you, they don't have to have any meaning unless you give it meaning. Mm-hmm. Like nothing in life has meaning to you unless you prescribe a meaning to it. So choose a meaning that serves you. If somebody does insult you, say, no, they're probably intimidated or by my beauty or by my skill, you know, and and let that run with it versus you creating the story that you're inadequate and that somehow that person is better. Yep. And Mia was a lover of dance at Newcastle Dance and Music Academy and had been dancing since she was just three years old and danced all the way till she was 18 years old. And that's where Mia identified with art therapy in the forms of art, music, and dance. And it was a great means of expression for her dur- during a difficult time. Yeah. So Mia was an honor roll, um, honor roll student at App Aquinamink High, where she was a dynamic understudy all through school. At one point, Mia wanted to open up a spread of dental offices, but her heart was beating in another direction. And fun fact, that was actually after high school, I thought the same thing. Oh my gosh, like what if I did a franchise of dental practices? Because my cousin was a dentist. And so I went to school to be a dentist (laughs) for for a semester. Yeah, It's rare that I hear a fun fact about you that I didn't already know, but that one takes me by surprise yeah and then i transitioned and i went into the ministry and then somebody told me like oh you just kind of confused god was saying the ministry the whole time but you thought he said dentistry (laughs) i was like oh that's cute yes so for mia she attended delaware state university majoring in art education the obvious perfect choice for her and she was a member of alpha kappa alpha sorority and the national society of leadership and success which is sigma alpha pi the limitless fashion club and also worked as a camp counselor at her home cornerstone church mia's life turned around when she realized that her journey was not meant to be over when she was 16 years old she had talent her education and her story to share with others this is when she found out about pageantry And after the lowest points in Mia's life and mental health, she knew she needed to find a way to feel beautiful again. And this is when she joined her first pageant, Miss Delaware Teen USA 2014. Her aunt was Mrs. Delaware United States in 2002-2003, and her cousin started competing in the America system but didn't think she could do this. And to her dismay, um, she won Miss Delaware Teen USA 2014 on her first try. So it was like, you know, I'm going in here. I don't think I can do this. But whatever, and then she won. <laughs> Especially like one of the, I mean, the biggest pageant, like competitive wise, right? one of the For biggest, sure. like yeah, and, oh, gosh. So Ashley Coleman, a DSU alumni who was both Miss Teen Delaware USA and Miss Teen USA in 1999, was an early inspiration for Mia and was her interview coach as well. So Stephen, I'm, here's a pop quiz: Who oh. crowned Ashley Coleman? And I'll give you a hint. We just did a podcast on her. Gosh, who, mm, when you say just, oh, like, Amani? No, 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 no. Oh, okay. I don't remember. Oh, my God. Vanessa, Vanessa Lachey. Oh, got it. Vanessa <laughs> Lachey. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So I didn't start, I mean, I, I really didn't start watching pageantry until 
2009 when the company started. Mm-hmm. And that's why I was like, okay, I got to start focusing in here. So like Katie Stam, um, Kristen Dalton, like that was your first wave. Yeah, that was my first wave. So before then I was in high school and I was like, huh, that's on. Okay. I'll watch it. You know, <laughs> and, like let's, let's see how pretty the girls are. You know, that was my extent. Um, and then, you know, of course, you know my story, but yeah. So I, I, I did not know that. But Vanessa Lachey makes way more sense. I was not even sure what I was thinking about Imani because I'm like, gosh, we haven't, like, it wouldn't be Zozabini or Chesley. Mm-hmm. I mean, because, like, we just, you know, interviewed them. But yeah, Vanessa, that makes way more sense. Mm hmm. So Mia went on to represent Delaware at Miss Teen USA and she placed in the top 15. Hot mm-hmm. dog. Mm-hmm. And what was happening in her life? She was only being herself. And maybe this was the power she needed all along. These first few pageant experiences really empowered her to share her story and educate others about suicide and depression awareness. Only three years later, she competed at Miss Delaware USA 2017, a pageant that wants their state title holder to be one of the top grown up and mature women. And Mia competed in interview, swimwear, and evening gown, and her style just rocked the stage. She came out with an electric lime green two-piece bikini and was able to change into a more sophisticated look wearing a floor-length toga style kind of flowy one-shoulder gown. Okay, can you describe what a toga gown is? Yeah, so basically, um, you think about Grecian time. Um, So I think of toga most often as a one shoulder. So if you think of like Greek gods and goddesses in folklore, usually they have like their, their robe tied up on one shoulder, drapes down, and then it's very fitted on the waist. Um, And it can be either straight as far as silhouette, but most often it's flowy. Mm, Got it. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to do a a plug today. Today's podcast is unofficially sponsored by Jessie Ledoux in her new fashion blog. Which Aww. is through this together at uh, on Instagram. So at throw this together, she has a lot of cute outfits and like really witty writing, and so you all should go follow it. Oh, that warms my little heart. Thanks, Stephen. Mm-hmm. Okay, so then back to Mia. Then came the final question. Mia was to answer. So if a girl came from a foreign country, what would you tell her? And Mia's answer was, "America is a land of opportunity. When you come to America, you can believe in your dream." And Mia did not expect to win, especially considering that she was competing against a contestant that was on their seventh attempt. And this fact became irrelevant as Mia Jones was crowned Miss Delaware 2017. She won the opportunity to potentially be the first Miss USA from the state of Delaware. And that, of course, brings me to a major coaching moment. And one of the best ways to stay in a clear and focused headspace during your pageant is to not look at the qualifications and experience of your competitors because everyone comes from a different background, level of experience, and these things do not determine how a contestant will perform in this pageant. And remind yourself of the top five reasons you're meant to be the title holder and focus on showcasing this to the judges. So instead of saying, well, this person's competed seven times, I mean, my gosh, they must definitely be more prepared than me. Instead of thinking that way, say, okay, I'm going to write down, when you have any feelings of insecurity, I want you to write down the five reasons you would make a fantastic title holder. And that should just become your mantra to pick you up when you find yourself competing um, in your mind with these other people. You have something magic. And Mia shows here that her first attempt, no experience, she won. So yes, you can have experience. Yes, you can have coaching. All of that is important. But sometimes a judge just picks up on magic. And that's okay too. Yeah, like the most important thing is to catch your catch yourself when you're in that negative space. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can be in a negative space for. I mean, sometimes it could be days. Like Renata the other day, she was like, "What is wrong with you?" And I'm like, "Gosh, I don't know." She's like, "You're in a bad mood." And I'm like, "I am in a bad mood. Why am I in a bad mood?" And like, so I always go through this checklist. I'm like, "Okay, did I eat?" Yeah, I eat. I'm like, okay, did I get enough sleep? Yeah, I got enough sleep. Like, did I get enough rest? Like, sleep, like play time? Because sometimes I, I have, a, well, not sometimes, I have a tendency to overwork myself. I'm like, did I get enough, like, just recreation? Like, where I'm just laying around watching TV or just, like, reading a, a casual book? So, anyway, I went through this checklist. And really, what happened is I got into this negative relationship about me and money. It was like the scarcity, right? Where money, money was scarce or, you know, cause with everything going on and 
I, I went into this fear mode and it really started to affect what people around me were experiencing, my, my wife, Renata. And so when I realized that, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, I got to balance it out because I'm in a negative state, which is down. So I've got to neutralize it in the way that you, a way that I neutralize it is I wrote down all the things that made me like really wealthy. Like I focused on my friendships. I'm like, wow, I can mm. walk. My eyesight, I have the ability to hear and touch and taste, things like that. That like, it, I don't care how much money I had in the world if I had Jeff Bezos' money, right? If I didn't have my eyesight, they still cannot reconstruct an eyeball, you know? So it doesn't, like, those things make you really wealthy, right? Mm-hmm. So I just started to focus on the abundance, and then my, my energy lifted up. So how you can apply this is if during rehearsal you just feel like your energy down or you want to go in a cocoon and hide from people ask yourself like why am i feeling like this and go through your checklist you know just like out loud i mean whisper don't scream it Uh, but like did i eat okay did i sleep you know all these kinds of things and then if you find that a contestant is getting in your head like focus on all the things that make you powerful or neutralize her right so if you've put her in a place of basically idol worship where you're placing her way ahead of you where you're like oh she's prettier than i am and she has a talent you need to bring her back down to earth in your own mind of course you're not Mm -hmm. going to share this list with anyone but rip her apart like be the critic toward her because you got to neutralize your feelings on her and i actually did this with one of my mentors that i looked up to so much that i was to the point where i started to like kind of idolize him and it was an unhealthy relationship between he and I because I'm like he could do no wrong and all that and then I had to neutralize it so I'm like here's all the things I do not like about this guy and like here's all the things I do not want to be like him and really it neutralized us out so we could be back on equal playing field so if he said something I'm like I don't agree with that <laughs> and whereas before I'd be like okay and I was scared to speak my voice, mm-hmm. you know, speak my truth. So whatever he said, I would just, okay, yeah, let me try that. And even if I didn't want to. Um, so that really helped me. And hopefully it helps you listen. Well, and to, to build on that, to make it more pageantry focused from my perspective, I would say one, like Steven said, don't verbalize this to anyone. <laughs> if, if you are at that point, like this should only be reserved for when you really feel like it's getting you into a negative space to be comparing yourself. Because if you're just doing that and you still feel confident and then you're breaking people down in the process too, it just is going to be toxic for your confidence, for how you're approaching pageants in general. So this is like a really extreme standpoint. If you find yourself really getting down in yourself, yes. And then again, like we just said, don't verbalize it because you never want to be known as a contestant that is a sore loser because if you do this to the point where you don't think this person has value and then they win and you verbalize it, you're going to think, okay, well, why the heck did they win? They didn't deserve it. They don't know this. They're not this. They're not this. They're not this, which is not the case. You've just done this as a tactic to avoid psyching yourself out. So very important to keep it to yourself. And again, only in extreme circumstances, do you want to pick people apart like that? Usually it's like a counterbalance where, okay, What's one strong thing they have? Okay, what's one one strong thing that I have? So you want to be cautious in that respect, but it definitely has a time and a place. Right, and that's the whole thing. You use it to counterbalance because here's the thing that happens, Jesse, to your point. So there's also been people in my life that I just do not like. (laughs) <laughs> they just get on my nerves. They've jaded me. They've done all those things. So they were an extreme negative. So in order to, because you want to live life neutral, right? Like that's, I mean, life seeks balance. You have men, women, north, south, east, west, um, you know, you know, positive, negative, all those things. So life seeks balance. There's always a balance. So if you find somebody really in the negative that you just don't like at the same pageant, right? And then they have a tendency to bring your energy down and you don't want your energy to be affected by them. So then do the same exercise, but focus on all of their positives until you feel it neutralized and then you can stop. You're like, oh, okay. Like I see like where she does have some strong suits. I see where she does have a lot of value. And then your feelings toward her will no longer be negative and then you can focus on winning. I slapped the microphone out of my mouth. Um <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's how you use it. Yeah, definitely, it, because if you're in that negative space, I don't want to say you're not going to win because I'm sure there's people who's won in a negative space, but your experience definitely will not be as enjoyable and you will reduce 
the likelihood of winning because you hear all the time in pageant interview, judges don't remember what you say, but they always remember how you made them feel. And if you go in there with this negative attitude, they're going to pick up on your negativity more than what you say. Definitely. Completely agree with that. Cool. All right. So this is always a great reminder, um, you know, to kind of wrap this up here, uh, not to look at other contestants, uh, previous pageant experience. It will always psych you out and it does not determine the results of the pageant anyway. So, it's a wasted activity. Mm-hmm. So Miss USA 2017 was held in Las Vegas, Nevada. And for the first time since 2003, the pageant would not have a top 15 or a top 20 like it has in years past. Instead, the semifinalists competing on the final night would be a group of just 10. And unfortunately, Mia did not make this small group. Uh, and Cara McCullough of District of Columbia won the title that year. So Mia took her efforts and pageant experience to the Miss Earth USA 2019 pageant. This pageant was also held in Vegas, um, in Las Vegas, Nevada, at the South Point Resort and Casino. Although she did not have a predetermined environmental friendly platform in the past, she was still passionate about educating children, teens, adults, and elders about the importance of valuing themselves and the beloved planet Earth. And this is a coaching moment too, because um, I'm actually going to use my my current life experience to to touch back to touch back on it. But a lot of my friends, I'm in the stage of my friends are becoming parents, and or they have multiple children, and they keep saying to me like, "Okay, I'm not done. I know I want another kid." Or I, I when I had my second, I knew I was done. And I was thinking about um, this when I was doing the outline for this podcast for Mia. And it's really hard to jump back into the ring after you have competed in what you consider to be a pinnacle. Uh, Miss USA is definitely something that a lot of people consider a pinnacle pageant where that's the peak um, of their experience. And for me, I I always commend someone that puts their hat back in the ring. And and I can relate because when I competed for Miss New York America, I felt like I finally hit my my strength and my stride with competing in pageantry. I was like, I'm not done. And that's why I explored Miss International. So if you are competing or you just competed and you aged out or whatever, really do some introspective focus and think about like, are you done? Like I know in my life I am done. I have given pageantry from a competitive standpoint, everything I have. And that's why I'm on the coaching side. But I know people today that are like, you know, I, I would love to compete again. They love that aspect. So do some introspective thinking and explore other systems. If you feel like you have more to give, it's okay. If your pinnacle system either is aged out or you've competed already, like give it another shot. But you know in your heart if you're done or you're not. Yeah, love that. So yeah. remembering her inner power and strength, she strutted away to the top three and won highest score in evening gown, placing second runner up earned her the title of Miss Earth USA Water. Using this opportunity, she wants to promote respect for the planet and animals and people that live there. And Mia's pageant and educational skills have earned her a successful career both inside and outside of modeling. She received a Bachelor of Arts in Fine Arts and plans to become an art therapist and was working as a fourth grade teacher. And she enjoys teaching the students all the things they need for their education along with being the drama coordinator. She may want to open up one of her own community centers for fine arts one day, and she has come a long way from wanting to open a dental clinic, that's for sure. And Mia was also awarded the title of Giovanni It Girl Ambassador out of over 10,000 entries, which is a huge accomplishment. And this opportunity allowed her to graduate from school with much less debt than she would have expected. And currently, she is being sent dresses to take photos in, do videos, doing lives on social media, and... This is the job she will likely never give up. I mean, who would? Yeah. Mia also fills up her time as an assistant director for the all-star recreational cheer team, Lutzy or Lutz Cheerleading Academy, dealing with uniforms, girls, and training. In her decade of pageant experience, Mia has mastered the perfect runway walk and is happy to share this knowledge with her clients. She's taking her years of experience to teach other women how to find their inner power and use this to win pageants through legacy pageant consulting. And then think about the journey of someone who at one point in time, not too long ago, didn't see value in themselves is now teaching other people how to find their value. Mm. So powerful. Yeah. I, I heard it said once, this is by my, my first mentors in business. They said the thing that you challenge that you struggle 
the most with, you will become the best teacher at. Mm. And I'm like, I really taken that to heart over the last, gosh, see, they mentored me when I was around 20, between 20 and 23. So like 15 years, really. And you, you see it. I mean, it's true. But um, currently Mia is working out of uh, Cecil. Oh, gosh. I think it's Cecile. Cecile. Cecile Boutique as a stylist and modeling coach. She does a lot of virtual appointments, especially now, naturally, with the girls as she resides in Florida. And she still loves helping the boutique uh, um, since the owner is also her pageant coach, which is like as a pageant coach, that is such a natural tie in to do Mm -hmm. uh, a boutique. I wonder why more coaches don't do it. Right. And I think, again, mini coaching moment here. So we just said that she is a pageant coach herself. And then she also has her own pageant coach. So a lot lot of people I can hear some naysayers going, well, if you're so great as a coach, why do you need a coach? And I would just say, like, be a student of life. Never stop learning. And just because you can guide others doesn't necessarily mean you can apply that skill for yourself. I know that I've, I've helped brand hundreds, maybe thousands of contestants over my five and a half years with Pageant Planet. And when it comes to branding myself, it's still the hardest thing that I do because I overthink and I think of all these avenues and I'm never satisfied. So having someone else in your corner, even if you consider yourself an expert to someone else, it's just so nice. So never write off the opportunity to have insight from uh, someone else or an expert or a mentor. Mm, Yeah. So valuable. So value. People literally hire me to consult for their businesses, but then like with Pageant Planet, I'm too close to it. So mm-hmm. then I hire consultants to say, okay, could you tell me what I'm missing here? And then they tell me, I'm like, oh my, so obvious. And, and how the calls are ran, right? Like right. You, you, you all consult me on a weekly basis. Um, all right. So Mia enjoys traveling around the United States into tropical destinations for leisure and modeling work. And she still enjoys meeting up with the Giovanni It Girl family that helped her when she was going through college. And she's currently studying for LSAT to get into law school for family law, foster care, adoption, divorce, and child support. Wow. Yeah. And even after competing in the Miss Earth USA pageant, she's still young and eager to potentially compete in another system. And perhaps Miss World America or Miss Grand America will be where she takes home the national title. We'll not, we'll have to see. Um, wait and see after she passes on her current title, which is planned for August. So you can follow her on Instagram at underscore Mia Imani and where she will continue to inspire her audience about one important life lesson. They told me I could never be anything, so that's why I became everything. And in her own words, uh, Mia says, always tell your full story. They get a well-rounded part of you. Tell your whole authentic truth and be who you are. I look back at Miss USA and I wasn't fully aware of who I was or what I should have been doing. And I went into Miss Earth USA saying my whole story and truth, and that's what helped me do so well. Showing up authentically you, as cheesy as it sounds, will always win. If you would like to be a featured contestant for our next podcast, create a contestant profile with all of your information, hidden facts, and what makes you special. Then email support at pageantplanet.com with the title, podcast feature so that we can review your profile we will let you know after you submit if you're scheduled so also a special shout out to maria Giorlando for doing the research and thank you for listening and if you've received any benefit from this show or for once previous please consider giving us a five-star review especially if you've been listening to us for weeks and months like take a moment give us a five-star review because it might seem like a small action but it really does help us keep the show going so until next time Take care. Want to become a part of pageant history? Create a free contestant or business profile on pageantplanet.com to unlock hidden features and connect with other experts throughout the world.